Ja, dobar dan. Uh, I'll speak in uh, in English, so I hope it's it's okay. It's just easier to present uh, the work I'm doing, and uh, I'm very happy to be here. I'm very happy to be with you, and uh, thank you very much for the invitation to this interesting event, which is happening in Slovenia. So I will share my screen. I hope it works, uh, and and then we can start with my presentation. Uh, just a second. You give me a. A moment. Okay, I hope you can see my presentation. Yeah, I'll I'll go a little bit more in general. Um, so I, I my my title of the presentation is uh, climate change from go global policy to local actions, and the reason I actually started a little bit more general because I want to also to to describe to present what is going on at the local European and also the, the national and local level, but also then how the policies which we are doing and which we are presenting um, and preparing at the European level are helping to, to actually be a bit better uh, and contribute to, to the solutions which we need to have it uh, to, to fight the climate crisis. But let's start with the first slide. That's an animation which has been prepared by my colleagues at the Copernicus Climate Change Service, and it shows the monthly so, uh, surface air temperature um, variation since 1980s. And you can see in this, uh, hopefully you can see well, well the, the, the animation that basically after year 2000, most of the globe became warmer than the long-term average. And in particular, the Northern hemispheres, Europe, and northern like uh, Arctic regions are becoming much warmer than the rest of the globe. So we have seen the temperatures above five to six degrees higher than the average uh, over the last 30 years or so. And we know the reason. Uh, the reason it's, of course, the greenhouse gases. So, uh, and here is the slide which shows about where we are in Europe with the greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, and you can see that the trend is rather, uh, let's say, positive. So basically positive in the terms that it's going in the right direction. So, um, and we can see that now in 2020, and these are the recent values, we are around 30% below the 1990s value of the greenhouse gas emissions in Europe. Um, and with the Fit for 55 package, we aim at the end of the, this decade be at minus 55. And at the mid-century, next 30 years, we, we aim to be climate neutral continent. We aim to be that. Of course, the path is long. And this, this green, uh, green line here, uh, dotted line here, is basically not like it will be. So it will be going up and down. Uh, but we aim that we would be climate uh, neutral at the end or the mid of this century. So at the end of this timeline here in 2050. When we have a Slovenian numbers, I didn't put them on this slide, but um, Slovenia is basically, the numbers are lower. So um, aim to be around 27% um, lower than the 1990s by 2030. And the rest would be then co uh, with coming with a compensation with, with carbon sinks through the forest. But I come to that later. And of course, even if we succeed, succeed to be climate neutral, we will not able to stop the climate change. Here are the slides, uh, the maps showing the global, the European warming by the end of the century based on two scenarios. One is so-called low medium scenario. So following Paris agreement being climate neutral and the one is a high emission scenario, so basically not doing much. And both, uh, all figures, all the maps here showing the temperature increase. Uh, of course, that this increase will be different, depend on the scenario, depend on the season. But you can see that the, the numbers are uh, showing above like two, three degrees, at least warmer than what we are experiencing now. And that means that we are aiming towards um, uh, other, let's say, related uh, climate extremes to this. Uh, and one of them is, of course, the, the heavy rain precipitation, the heavy precipitation. That means that we are, um, and this is the slide showing at the end of the century, the Europe um, 
projected pre uh, heavy precipitation, which leads to floods and droughts. And we can see that, especially in the winter, we can expect, particularly in the central Europe where Slovenia is, uh, increases in heavy precipitation events, which will lead to the flooding, uh, which is then, of course, impacting our um, way of living. And th this, is, uh, this is the general slide uh, showing many different, uh, let's say, all uh, regions in Europe. And uh, what I wanted to give in this, uh, say in this uh, slide is all parts of Europe will be affected, will be impacted by the climate change from droughts, coastal flooding in the, in the southern uh, Europe to the heavy precipitation events in the central northern Europe to forest fires, which are already happening now and will be happening even more in the southern Europe and also moving northwards. Uh, and there are also other uh, extremes like hail storms, which are already quite frequent in Slovenia might increase and, and of course type of flooding as well. So all parts of Europe will be affected by the impacts of climate change. And I give you one example, and here is the, uh, basically linking these impacts with the, um, basically um, the way how we live. And one here is the projected heat waves um, by the end of the century, which shows that Southern Europe and the Central Europe will increase the number of days with uh, extreme temperature, which is called as a heat wave. And we know that the heat waves are affecting the people living in the cities and the cities which are the most impacted by the heat waves are of course those uh, which have lower share of the green spaces. And on the right side, you can see on the map, the cities sh uh, showing how, what is the share of green spaces in the cities. And you can see that in the Southern Europe, the share of the cities with the green spaces is low. So basically the impact of the heat waves in the Southern Europe in the cities will be much stronger than in the in the other parts of Europe. Slovenia is somewhere in the middle, so with a share of the green spaces around 10 to 20 percent of the of the city area, but and and that's of course will not be enough to have a let's say a nice way of living in the in the in the cities uh, if we don't do uh, any kind of changes there. And, and that leads me to another aspect, which is um, about the vulnerability and the vulnerable group of population. And here is one, basically two, two different, let's say, uh, indicators of how society is vulnerable. One is the long-term unemployment and another one is the um, elderly population, uh, which are both having very strong relation to the, to the heat waves. On one side, side um, the, those who are unemployed or who have low incomes are very, difficult to afford living in the in the apartment or houses which are adapted to uh, impacts of heat waves and on the other side the vulnerable persons like those who are uh, above 75 uh, years old will be much more let's say also affected by the heat waves because of the uh, other uh, let's say um, health condition which might might have and you can see that again those regions which will be the most affected having also the highest share of those who are having um, let's say long-term unemployment or being uh, uh, elderly population another example i want to show it's very it's it's coming from italy but it's also very relevant for slovenia is about impacts on the agriculture and here you can see the olive oil production example, very simple production, uh, which most uh, many countries in Southern Europe are depending on. Um, and um, you can see that these are uh, olive, olive trees are very much um, sensitive to the specific diseases, pest infestation, which is um, sometimes uh, related to the high uh, temperatures in the winter. And because of the climate change, this will of course increase. And in some cases, and this is a case of the Italy, almost 80 or even more percent of the olive trees uh, might be affected by the end of the century. And of course, the olive oil as one of the, let's say, product uh, from Italy will be, of course, very much affected by that. This is the Slovenian example I want to show before I go to the policies a little bit more. It's about the, the impact of the extreme events. Here is the, let's say, frost, cold spells affecting the production in agriculture and the case of the apple production. You know, in 2017, we, have a, uh, we had um, a strong frost uh, event in, in Slovenia and apple production fell by 80%. 
of course it then uh, jumped back but uh, but this was directly impacting the, the those who are producing the apples and of course having the uh, impact on the uh, agriculture income or the farmers income so it, there is direct relation between the extreme events and the incomes of the farmer in this case and then the last example uh, from that, it's about the forestry. You remember that uh, I said in the, one of the first slides that um, you know, uh, emissions can be compensated by, by, the, by the increased sinks in the forestry sector. And some of the countries in the Central Europe, including Slovenia, are, um, are counting that the forestry sector will be compensating the, the extent emissions which are not being able to decrease but here you can see the, the figures which we are having uh, here at the EEA showing that the forestry sector is not anymore a uh, net sink it's a net emitter so it's very very difficult to have a forest compensating for the um, emissions which are coming from other socioeconomic sectors and that's a, quite an important figure when we are looking to the policies and this is the, the, the figure which shows uh, losses from all weather and climate extremes in the last 40 years. And we can see in Europe, we lost 450 millions, billions of euros in the last 40 years. And only one third of these events uh, were actually insured. So the rest was the loss to the society. Of course, we are preparing the, the different um, policies to address all these problems uh, at the global level. We have a Paris Agreement, we have Sendai Framework for Disaster Risk Reduction, and we have SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals. Europe is, of course, reacting to that very fast and very, um, uh, yeah, it's doing quite, quite a lot on reacting on climate crisis. So we adopted the climate law. Uh, climate EU governance regulation is there. We have EU adaptation strategy just adopted this year and then other, let's say, uh, directives and um, strategies uh, which are also being uh, prepared or in place to fight the climate crisis. Green Deal, uh, you've heard already about that, um, of course, uh, has been introduced a year and a half ago, um, reaching, talking about the climate neutrality uh, by the mid uh, of this century, but also the Green Deal goes beyond climate, biodiversity strategy, circular economy will be addressed, zero pollution strategy will be presented, farm to fork strategy, just transition, very important one to have climate neutrality or other policies linked that it's, they are done in the, in the just way. Uh, investment plan is important, and of course, we need to also look into how the new strategy, industrial strategy uh, will be prepared. On the European Green Deal and links to the Fit for 55 has been introduced in July. Um, many different um, uh, policies have been revised, uh, which are tackling the climate emissions, which are tackling the climate sinks, like the LULUCF uh, policies, uh, but also looking into the um, into the how to become a climate resilient, uh, in particular uh, into just uh, resilience and social climate, uh, climate social funds and so on and so forth. It's a package which is enormous, many of different, uh, let's say, uh, pieces of legislation are being revised. Uh, and this is the package which hopefully will lead us to the climate neutrality by the mid, mid of this century. Uh, just briefly to mention, we cannot just look into climate neutrality, we need to also look into climate resilience, EU, EU adaptation strategies being in place, looking into more into the how to become smarter uh, in adapting, how to become more systemic in adapting, how to become more uh, faster in introducing implementation of adaptation, and also how to place Europe into the specific um, international context. And at the end, it's also important how we use, how we actually implement and use the actions at the local level. Here are some figures which you are aware of, uh, looking into the, how the natural based solution can help us in becoming climate neutral, but also to increase climate resilience. And there are many local actions be already implemented, but more will have to be done when we start investing into the, in the implementation. And this is my last slide, just to conclude, uh, it's important to start making the right, right investment, not only in terms of money, but also in terms of efforts, uh, not only looking into the climate, uh, climate uh, neutrality, but also looking in climate 
resilience, like in investing into the adaptation, because we've seen that basically climate change will continue. Uh, there are many solutions which are available, but we need to start implementing them. Uh, more investment is needed in particularly in new type of the solution, not only changing a little bit, we need to start thinking differently. We need to transform the whole society and the whole econo economy uh, uh, globally, but also in Europe. And we need to have, uh, we need to invest in long-term solution, not, not uh, improving something which is actually only working for a couple of years and working together at various governance levels. And most importantly, and this today event is also about that, we need to share our knowledge, we need to share our thinking, and we need to share our practices. And that's all from my side. Hvala lepa in nazaj do vas.